Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Top 10 Songs. So today we're going to get to a band that I know I've been talking about for a long time. I've been promising this for months on end. And quite frankly, the reason why it's taken so long is that this is a band that's very near and dear to me with a lot of great songs, a lot of really great albums. And I've just been kind of dreading actually doing this one because I'm thinking, how in the fuck am I going to be able to set aside and pick out 10 songs above all their great songs? Because quite frankly, and you know, there's some exceptions. Uh, most of the songs to me are pretty damn great. So of course, of course, I'm talking about fellow New Yorkers, Dream Theater. Okay, one of the most important bands on the progressive metal scene. Uh, you know, a band that really kind of, uh, along with like Dream, uh, along with Queensrÿche and Fate's Warning, really helped spearhead the whole progressive metal movement in like the late '80s and the early '90s. So, what I've done is I've, uh, and ironically enough, I'm also kind of doing this top ten songs by perhaps my favorite band to emerge in the last thirty years, also on my birthday. So. Go figure. Didn't plan it that way, but it just kind of worked out. So um, this was a really hard one to put together, and it's taken me a few days of a lot of kind of reworking of the of the list and stuff coming and going and coming back and going. And I, I will say my honorable mentions list is probably the longest out of anyone I've ever done before. So if you don't hear your favorite in my top ten list, Stay to the end, keep watching, because I've got a, a really lengthy list that goes through just about all their albums. And like I said, if, if it's not my top ten, doesn't mean I don't like it. All right, I just happen to like these ten songs better than any other. So there's no right or wrong answer here. This is just my personal favorites. Again, this list could change again next week, next month. Uh, for right now, for the last couple of days, this is what I'm going to go with. If you don't see what you like here, sorry. Doesn't mean I don't like your choices, right? But... Please list yours, right? Because everybody has their own favorites. So starting at number 10, we're going to go back to the Train of Thought album, which is an album I did quite a bit, uh, the kickoff track, As I Am. I like that album. It's, I mean, you know me. I like the heavy stuff, and that album is so heavy. Uh, easily the heaviest album they did to date at the time. And that tune, I mean, that doomy kind of opening riffage from John Petrucci, right? And just the head-banging whole middle section and the crazy soloing, uh, Le James Labrie's, you know, ominous vocals. Really dig that tune a lot. I like that whole album quite a bit. Uh, it's always been a favorite of mine. But as I am, coming to number 10. Coming into number 9, we're going to go to the Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence album. An album which really I have not listened to much at all in the last bunch of years. And, you know, in, in going through this whole exercise, I go back and I revisit all the albums again. And I'd forgotten just how strong that album is. And uh, my number my number nine track for this list is going to be The Glass Prison. Okay. A great tune. That's actually the part one of the 12-step suite written by Mark Portnoy. Mike Mark Portnoy, Mike Portnoy, uh, talking about his alcohol addiction. So they would go on to uh, record a, was it five, six, I forget exactly how many tunes they did, how many tracks they did, which would appear on various albums, put it all together. It's all like one long suite, tells a story, that whole thing. Uh, but The Glass Prison, great song, heavy song, real proggy, real menacing, dig it a lot. Uh, coming to number eight, this one kind of was in my original list, went out of my original list. And then at the last minute, literally right before I went on camera, I was like, you know what? I have got to fit this one in here because I love it so much. It's from an album that I'm not overly crazy about, but I love this tune. And it, it pushed out something else that I, another song that I really like a lot. But in the end, I, I chose between the two and I'm like, you know what? I got to go with this one. Lines in the Sand from the Falling Into Infinity album. Yeah, that's just, uh, again, not one of my favorite Dream Theater albums, but there's like four, maybe five tracks on that album that I really like a lot. This one, Head and Shoulders Above the Others. I just think this is a great tune. It's got a killer groove. It's got great keyboards from Derek Sherinian, his one and only full-length album with the band. And uh, I just, I love the riffs in it. It's just a really cool kind of proggy hard rock tune. I dig it quite a bit. Lines in the Sand, coming at number eight. Coming at number seven, we're going to go all the way back to the first album, When Dream and Day Unite, which is a really fine album. Not a big fan of uh, their original vocalist, Charlie Domenici. It's got an interesting style, but I kind of don't think it really fit with the band too well. But the songs on that album are pretty damn good. Uh, again, Dream Theater just still kind of trying to find their way. But 
the Itzy Jam. Yitzy, Itzy Jam, however the hell you say it, that killer instrumental from that album. Still to this day, one of my favorite instrumentals by the band. And, you know, I could do a whole separate show on my top ten favorite Dream Theater instrumental tunes, and I might do that at some point because uh, there's so many great ones. But uh, Itzy Jam, for me, is just everything you'd want in a heavy progressive metal instrumental song. I mean, it's got twists and turns, it's got tons of groove, it's complex, it's heavy. Always love that tune, and there's a lot of strong songs on that album, but that is, without a doubt, my favorite. Uh, coming in at number six, got to go with their first big, massive, epic cha- change of seasons, right, from the EP of the same name. Sherinian's first recording with the band. Uh, it's an epic tune, massive proportions, right? It's a song that they had written earlier in their career, uh, but kind of kept wanting to record it. They finally did. Great stuff. So dramatic, so proggy. Uh, a lot of great kind of twists and turns and things like that. I always really like that tune. And more importantly, uh, another example of how well Dream Theater could interject like those haunting yet catchy melodies in so many of their tunes. That's the one thing about this band I always really like. You know, you can, I love the heaviness of them. I love the proggy nature and all that, you know, wild solos and all that kind of stuff. But they always, you know, maybe not on all albums, uh, but especially early in their career, they always manage to inject really catchy hooks and melodies. And that, I think, is what has always set their music apart from a lot of the other bands that kind of fall into the same genre ilk as uh, kind of what they're doing. All right, the top five. Uh, for number five, I'm going to go to the Images and Words album. Of course, you got to go to Images and Words at some point. And um, my number five is Learning to Live. I think that is one of the most underrated tracks from that album. Uh, it's always been one of my favorites. And uh, I just love the chorus. I, I love the whole way the song paces and everything like that. It's just a magical, magical tune. And I much prefer that over some of the more well-known tracks on the album, with the exception of one. Okay, Coming in at number four, got to have Metropolis Part 1. I mean, <laughs> just easily and always has been my absolute favorite song from Images and Words. You know, most people point to Pull It Under. I point to Metropolis. Metropolis and Learning to Live for me are just the pinnacle of that album. And that whole that album is great. All right, broke a lot of barriers. I know for a lot of people, a lot of people still say, oh, it's still their best album ever. I don't quite go that far, but is it in their top three best albums? Absolutely. Uh, and I think, again, it's, it was a band just all of a sudden hitting their stride and they never stopped after that. So Metropolis Part One coming in at number four. My top three, great tunes for me anyway. Uh, Number three, we're going to go to the Metropolis 2 Scenes from a Memory album, which is my favorite Dream Theater album of all time. Got to go with the Dance of Eternity. Just kick ass. And, you know, when you see them play that live, your jaw just falls, crashes to the floor, breaks in a million pieces, never to be attached again. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I mean, I saw them play the whole Scenes from a Memory album uh, last year in concert, and I've seen them do that album a couple times. And it's just amazing. It's just amazing what they do in that song. Just killer, killer, killer. Love it. Only to be topped for me, my number two from the same album, <clears throat> excuse me, Scenes from a Memory, uh, Metropolis 2 Scenes from a Memory, my number two pick is Home. Uh, Home is just menacing. It's heavy. It's got that kind of like Egyptian thing going on there. And uh, just amazing. I, you know, I could, I could have put that whole album in this list. Uh, I opted not to do that because that's like the easy way out. Um, but I just, I love that whole, that, that's for me one of my favorite concept albums of all time. And that is an example of how a concept album for Dream Theater really works as opposed to The Astonishing, which they released a couple years ago, which for me doesn't really work. But more on that in a few minutes. All right, my number one tune of all time from Dream Theater. What can you say? Uh, it's It's epic. These guys had a way of, like, ending albums with really cool epics. You know, I'm, I'm not talking, you know, 10-minute songs. I'm talking, like, you know, 13, 14, 15, 20-minute long songs. Uh, and, again, this album, we're going to go back to an album which I dig a lot because it's so, it was so heavy when it was first released. And this song is just so heavy yet majestic and grandiose. And I think I've seen them play that live two times, I think. And just both times, I'm just like, oh my God, just reminds me how much I love that song. Uh, In the Name of God, but from Train of Thought. Love the soaring melodies. I love LaBrie's vocals in that. Just everything about that tune, you know, 
Rudess's keyboards and, you know, Petrucci. Man, God bless him. He's so good. Um, just it, the whole band just really killing it. You know, Portnoy on drums. <sighs> Perfection. It's the perfect progressive metal song, in my opinion. So that's my top ten. So you might be wondering, well, Pete, what do you got up your sleeve for honorable mentions? <laughs> Strap yourself in. Get a cup of coffee or uh, pour yourself a beer. It's going to take a little while. All right, let's go all the way to back to the first album, uh, A Fortune in Lies. I really wanted to sneak that into my top ten because I really dig that tune a lot, but I just really like those other tunes better. But Fortune in Lies is great. Status Seeker is killer. The Killing Hand, obviously, is great. Life Fusing Getaway, Afterlife. I mean, all those tunes are great. And, you know, I don't know, Charlie, it's, I don't dislike Charlie's vocals. I think, you know what it is, probably we've gotten so used to Labrie and love him or hate him. I know there are a lot of James Labrie haters out there, whatever. I think he's a perfect fit for Dream Theater. Uh, I, you know, I still to this day would love to hear all those songs, you know, sung by Labrie. And nothing against Charlie, because I, I, you know, Charlie's decent. I like the the stuff he's done, you know, since and all that. But I don't know. With this band, for me, he wasn't a great fit. But there's some great songs on there. Again, the band not fully fine in their true way yet, which they would on their next album, Images and Words. You know, you got to mention Pull Me Under. Uh, you know, I'm quite frankly sick of hearing it, but uh, it's still a great tune. It's not one of my favorite Dream Theater tunes, but it's the song that got me into the band, right? So got to mention them here. Uh, Another Day is a great tune. Okay, Take the Time, that's a classic. That's a classic. That sits probably just outside my top ten. Same thing with Under a Glass Moon. Love Under a Glass Moon. I love Petrucci's solo in that. Oh, it's just great, great stuff. So some of you might be wondering, geez, Pete, you didn't include any songs from Awake in your top ten. And I really thought long and hard about that. I mean, I really like the Awake album. My problem is I like that album more as a whole as I do the individual tracks. And none of the individual tracks do I like enough on their own to make my top ten list, if that makes any sense. Because there's some great, there's some stellar tunes on there. You know, Six O'Clock, great song. Caught in the Web, great song. Innocence Faded, Erotomania, Voices. <laughs> That's probably the song that could have been in my top ten. Voices is easily my favorite song on Awake, and that's probably a number 11 or 12 song for me, if I were to do like a top 20 or something like that. Uh, the Mirror, another great song. Lie, another great song. Lifting Shadows Off a Dream, another great song. Scarred, another great song. You kind of get the point here. Uh, all great tunes, just individually, none of them are just like, for me anyway, top 10 dream theater. Okay, I know some of you might differ on that, and that's, that's totally cool. Because it bothered me that I didn't have any Awake songs on my top ten list. But the more I kind of went and re-listened to stuff and went over this, and trust me, I debated this list over and over and over again, the more I was like, you know what, I just, I love the album. I don't like any of the songs individually as much as some of these other songs that mean a little more to me. But great songs nonetheless. Voices easily could have been top ten if you asked me two weeks from now, it might be in it. All right, uh, Falling Into Infinity, uh, I like New Millennium, it's a cool tune. Peruvian Skies I like quite a bit, that's easily my second favorite tune on here. Um, really cool Pink Floydy vibes on that, and I also dig uh, Trial of Tears, good song as well. Other than those three and the one that, uh, you know, and um, Lines in the Sand, I'm not a big fan of that album, okay? It's a little light for me. Uh, from Metropolis Part 2, Scenes from a Memory, I mean, shit, the whole album, right? The Overture, 1928, Deja Vu, Fatal Tragedy, Beyond This Life, One Last Time. As I even mention the title, I'm like, that haunting melody, just, just love it. It just stays with you. I was listening to the album yesterday, I'm like, oh my god. Um, the Spirit Carries On, and Finally Free, where they kind of bring a lot of those themes from the album together. Oh, what a great album. Perfect album for me. Uh, Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence, have a blind faith. That's another real highlight from that album. I dig that a lot. Misunderstood's a great tune. The Great Debate is also good. Uh, and then the sidelong, sweet uh, Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence, right? The title track. That's pretty strong, too. Uh, from Train of Thought, how about This Dying Soul? Endless Sacrifice. Another tune I love hearing them play live. It's so heavy. Honor They Father and, of course, Stream of Consciousness. Again, the more I'm going through this, the more I'm thinking I need to do, like, my favorite ten Dream Theater instrumental tunes at some point. Uh, from Octavarium. Strong album. I was never an enormous fan of this album, but uh, The Root of All Evil is a great tune. Uh, These Walls, I Walk Beside You, 
Panic Attack is easily my favorite song from that album. That's killer. Uh, Never Enough is very solid. Sacrifice Sons is very solid. I almost did not include the title track on this list. I'm not a huge fan of the Octavarian tune. It's long. It's lengthy. I like parts of it a lot. Other parts of it kind of bore me. But in the end, I decided to throw it in here because... It's just got too much good going for it, although I think it could have, if they trimmed it by like five minutes or so, might have been a little better. I know some of you made me not agree. I, I was at, you know, they played that album in its entirety with an orchestra uh, back in, geez, I don't even remember, on that tour. I saw it at Radio City Music Hall. I'm in the audience as part of the uh, the DVD and the live album and all that kind of stuff. So it was pretty cool to see live, but like going back and listening to that album, I tend to skip over that track a lot more than, than not. Uh, from Systematic Chaos, another one of those albums. You know, some of these albums coming up are ones that I haven't listened to in quite a while and revisiting. I'm like, yeah, you know what? They're pretty strong. I think this is right before Portnoy left the band. His influence, you know, at the time was really into like kind of like you know a lot of heavier metal and new metal and stuff like that. And you can really tell in the songwriting and the backing vocals and all that kind of stuff. Very aggressive material. Maybe a little out of character for Dream Theater, but I think a lot of it really works. Uh, from Systematic Chaos, I like In the Presence of Enemies, both parts one and two. Uh, the Dark Eternal Light, I'm sorry, The Dark Eternal Night was actually in my top ten, and that is the one that got booted in place of Lines in the Sand. I really dig Dark Eternal Night. That's so freaking heavy. Dark, menacing, crunchy. Ugh, love it. Constant Motion, another great tune. Repentance, good song. Prophets of War. Okay, and of course, The Ministry of Lost Souls, easily one of the stronger tracks from that album. Another cool epic to kind of finish up the album. Uh, from Black Clouds and Silver Linings, um, another one of their really solid albums, but probably not upper echelon dream theater for me. Portnoy's last album, uh, Nightmare to Remember is really strong. A Rite of Passage is great. Uh, in fact, Rite of Passage is probably, you know... Could have, it's a top 15 song for me, probably. The Shattered Fortress is another really strong one. Uh, the Best of Times is a good tune. Uh, and The Count of Tuscany I like. Again, The Count of Tuscany kind of like... Um, uh, what the hell were we talking Octavarium. Probably could have used a little trimming, I think. Really a good tune, good song that's got some great parts in it, but maybe just a little bit too long for its own good. But some great segments in Count of Tuscany. All right, so here we've got the uh, Portnoy's Gone, Mike Mangini's in, in the band, a very fine drummer. The first album, unfortunately, he does with the band is not one of their best, a uh, dramatic turn of events. I really dug it when it first came out. In the years since, I go back and listen to it, and I think it's really lacking some stuff. Um, if you go back to the beginning of our conversation here, I talk about how one of the things that's always made Dream Theater so great as a band is their ability to mix the the real heavy metal side of their of their sound with the real intricate complex prog side and throw in those kind of poppy hook laden melodies. For me, a dramatic turn of events doesn't have any of those melodies. I, I find there's some good music on that album, but none of those songs really grab me. Other than a few, you know, on, on the backs of angels, very strong tune. Uh, Lost, Not Forgotten, I like. Bridges in the Sky and Breaking All Illusions. Those four, strong. Top Shelf Dream Theater, I don't think so. And the rest of the tunes on the album, kind of forgettable. Again, great playing. I think the band's still trying to get used to working with Mangini, who is, you know, impeccable drum chops on the album, maybe slight mechanical. Uh, but I think some of that kind of synergy that all the guys had with Portnoy, a little bit lacking on that album. And I'm not one of those guys who's been crying and moaning since Portnoy left, you know. And I, I, I think Mangini's a fine drummer. If you've seen them live with him, he's excellent with the band. I think, you know, at this point in time, the two sides don't really need each other anymore. And quite frankly, if Portnoy came back to Dream Theater, where would that leave Sons of Apollo and Winery Dogs and Transatlantic and, you know, all the other stuff that, uh, that Portnoy has been working on? Neil Morse band. I mean, you know, Portnoy's doing so many different things. And I think we should let him. I think that Dream Theater has moved on from him. He's moved on from them. And I'm totally fine with the situation. But there's a lot of people who don't agree. And they're like, all they do is, you know, moan and groan about no Portnoy, no Dream Theater, and all this kind of stuff. I mean, come on. Uh, but I'm not a huge fan of the Dramatic Turn Events album. It's good. It's solid. Not one of my favorites. Uh, however, on the next one, Dream Theater, I think things take a turn for the better. A little shorter songs, okay. A little more compact. 
Definitely, I hear a lot of Rush influence on this album. Uh, the Enemy Inside, great track. The Looking Glass, favorite tune off the album. Uh, that's another top 15 song for me. I love that song a lot. Uh, the Enigma Machine, great song. The Bigger Picture, Behind the Veil, very, very strong track. Surrender to Reason, of course, the epic to end the album, The Illumination Theory, awesome. Really like the self-titled album. Okay, um, Probably my second favorite in the, of the Mangini era. Which brings us to the astonishing. You know, when the astonishing first came out, I was kind of, I was pretty hip to it. I was like, oh, this is good. A lot of material, double album set, trying to figure out the storyline, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And as time has gone on, I have found that I'm just not a fan of the astonishing. <laughs> it has a handful of decent tracks, you know. A new beginning is good. When your time has come is good. A life left behind and a moment of betrayal, all solid. There's just nothing really catchy or memorable about most of the tracks on that album. And I think to listen to the whole thing through and through, it's way too long, it's way too overblown, and it just doesn't grab me. I went to see them play the entire thing live in New York City, and I was bored to tears. Um, again, I want to love it because I love the band so much, but you know, every now and then you just got to admit sometimes these guys will put out an album, or any band you love will put out an album that's just not going to click with you. I kind of the same thing I feel like with Pink Floyd's The Wall. It just, you know, other than a handful of tracks, it just doesn't grab me, you know? And uh, that's how I feel about The Astonishing. And I think it's something they wanted to do, you know? And, you know, you think of like a full blown concept album, it just doesn't work like Scenes from a Memory does. And I think they learned some things from it. And they came back with perhaps, uh, well, in my opinion, easily the strongest album uh, since Portnoy left, which is Distance Over Time. All right, which is just chock full of great, great tracks. Okay, Untethered Angel, killer, paralyzed, heavy, fallen to the light, memorable and heavy and proggy, barstool warrior, kick ass, room 137, S29, probably my favorite track on the album, uh, at wit's end, killer epic length tune. All right on an album where, and again, epic length for the album, not epic length in Dream Theater parameters, right? Because they think they, they made a conscious attempt not to do like, you know, 12, 15, 20 minute songs on this album, uh, but a great one. And even the, if you get the CD version, uh, the bonus track, Viper King, is a really cool tune. It's kind of got this like kind of like Dream Theater meets Deep Purple vibe, very different from anything else on the album. Kind of a nice little addition at the end if you have the uh, the Digipack CD. So there you have a bunch of honorable mentions. Like I said, quite a few. Um, I'll, I'll reiterate my top ten here uh, again. This is my top ten for now. After debating on this for days, but uh, could change if if I do this again a month from now, it could change a little bit. But uh, you know, most of these uh, are my favorite tunes from Dream Theater, and a lot of them on this list are from earlier in their career because obviously I've had a lot more time with those. So the reason why you don't see anything from the last four or five or six albums is because, you know, the early stuff is what, you know, obviously has I've had so many years with and what have you. So In the Name of God, coming in at number one. Number two, Home. Number three, The Dance of Eternity. Number four, Metropolis Part One. Number five, Learning to Live. Number six, A Change of Seasons. Number seven, The Yitzi Jam. Number eight, Lines in the Sand. Number nine, The Glass Prison. And number ten, As I Am. There you have Dream Theater. Top ten songs, or maybe I should say Dream Theater Honorable Mentions with a couple with ten top with top ten songs. Or with ten favorite tracks, right? Whatever you want to call it. So anyway, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. So uh, what's coming up, you might say? Uh, hopefully this week we're going to get uh, Foreigner top 10 songs. Uh, within the next week, week and a half, you're going to get that Symphony X top 10 songs. Oh, uh, i got a rant cooking with the Cybert Brothers that we're hopefully going to be working on the next week or two. All sorts of stuff on the, uh, the agenda coming up, so you don't want to miss any of it. A lot of also new product review shows. Uh, I'm going to be doing something this week. I'm going to do a listening room this week. I'm also going to be doing... Um, Probably a little show where I quickly review some cool releases that came out in mid-late 2019 that I just never got around to, but I've, I'm getting around to now. So I want to recap a couple really notable releases. What do we you know? We got Devin Townsend and Flying Colors and uh, Hawkwind and uh, what else? What else we got here? Cats in Space and Neil Morse and Jesus, all sorts of stuff that's just been kind of floating in that I missed out on reviewing in 2019 but 
Better late than never, I always say, right? So we'll see you guys real soon. Don't touch that dial, and uh, have a great rest of the weekend. Bye-bye.